Hi, my name is Dan Galician. I'm a lecturer here at Cardiff Uni, and in this video I want to just give a brief introduction to engine makers. So this is a project that I set up to, uh, to get undergraduate students, as it says on this title really, that we, we want the students to help co-create, so in partnership with primary and secondary pupils and teachers, to create um, pro problems that they can solve that apply to real world issues that we can find in engineering. Uh, I use coding in pretty much everything I do for my own research in brain imaging, but for um, a wide range of activities and problems we'd like to solve, coding can be really useful. And the microbit is an amazing platform to experiment with this, especially for kids. And so um, we're looking to create uh, different kinds of activities that teachers can try out in the classroom. And the, uh, if you go to the For Teachers section, uh, which uh, is probably where I'll put this video actually, so you've probably found it already, these are the teacher packs. Uh, I just wanted to talk through uh, pack one quickly in terms of what you're actually going to do, because it talks about uh, using the microbit to make a step counter, and you might think, oh, well, that's already one of the examples I've seen from the microbit website, which it is, but it takes it further by making it a wireless step counter. And I'll show you why I find that really compelling. So the code is nice and simple to get started, that we have one microbit is going to be our transmitter, and it's just going to transmit the accelerometer value every 25 milliseconds. And this bit um, turns one of the LEDs on and off, it flashes it like this so we can see if it's working. The code for the receiver uh, looks very similar, uh, but uh, when it receives a name and value, it passes that name and value over the serial, and the serial is the uh, term for the uh, USB cable. So that means that when we plug the receiver into the USB cable, uh, we can get the data. So if I turn on my transmitter now, I'm just going to turn it on like this, and um, then we can see that this button show data device appears which allows us to see uh, on the screen the uh, accelerometer data and also here a trigger counter now we didn't actually have a trigger counter in our code so that's jumping ahead a little but you get the idea that we can see the data live from this micro bit which we can then because it's just battery pack we can put that in our pockets, walk around the room, and see uh, how that affects the data we're getting on our laptop or Chromebook that the pupils might be using, and so on. And um, I just find it really compelling that we can see the data with our own eyes, and then we can design some code to say, ah, oh, well, if this goes above a certain value, then we should count that as a step. But what about if um, if we start jiggling it all over the place, then clearly we're going to count two more steps than we would like to. Um, the, the data for this actually tends to work even better than what you're seeing here because I'm trying to make a recording and so then my computer is working a bit too hard. But um, you, you, you can get the idea of how reasonably re reliable the, the process is. And uh, so the code that we would then build up to is this more advanced code here, where in the example which we give to the pupils, then um, the slightly more complicated bit can be hidden inside a function, which we call uh, the trigger detector function. And so then we have a trigger level, so what value on that graph do we want to actually count as a step? And then we have this dead time, which we can introduce the concept of how long should we wait after one trigger before we allow a new one to happen. And um, if the pupils get really into it, they can also open up this function and then start thinking about um, how they could modify these conditions for when it's going to choose that it really was a trigger so that um, they could also detect jumps. Because if you hold it and you jump, the accelerometer actually goes the wrong way, as it were. It goes negative because... Um, when we jump, we no longer have um, the force of gravity that we can 
uh, feel pushing us up from the ground, we're kind of almost in free fall when we, when we jump. And so uh, we can actually detect that um, as well as steps. And um, I think it's really interesting activity to try and get pupils thinking about how they could have their own um, Fitbits if their families are into Fitbits or that kind of smart watch device. Uh, but it's a nice uh, example of looking at real data and getting it going with um, some code that hopefully isn't too intimidating, at least to start with, and builds up to something that's actually uh, doing something almost uh, in a real world setting. I hope you enjoy this activity and do please get in touch if you have any questions or any suggestions. Um, and I'd love to hear from you. So uh, thanks for watching. Bye.